today. Today I'm at home and a lot of people ask, how do you get everything done in one day? You guys do so much stuff. Well, today you'll find out. I've got a lot of things planned for today, but the key to getting it all done is first of all, prioritizing what needs to be done and then coming up with a plan. For example, today I need to render pork fat. I always try and start with the things that are going to take the longest and pork fat takes a long time to render down. So that's the first thing I'm going to do today because that's going to take the longest. While the fat is rendering down, that's when I can do other things I need to get done. For anyone that's new here, I bet you're probably wondering why I don't have a kitchen. And to answer that question, well, you're going to have to go back in some of our previous videos and watch our house tour and see why we don't have a kitchen. So today I'm going to cut this up, I'm going to render it down, and while that's rendering down, I have to feed the animals. I also have some beeswax from last season that I need to process because I'm going to use that for some soap. On top of that, I also need to feed the animals. I've already brought in wood, and I do need to make some bread because we're out of bread. I've rendered down pork fat before, and last time I used the crock pot. This time I'm not using the crock pot. The reason I'm not doing it in the crock pot is because I didn't really like the way that it turned out last time. Yes, there are many ways to render pork fat, but today I'm gonna to try this method. So I'm gonna do dry rendering. And dry rendering is when you do not add any liquid or water or anything to the pot or whatever it is you're using to render your fat down. So I've got this nice big piece of pork fat here. And what you wanna do is you wanna make sure your pork fat is pretty frozen still because it makes it easier to cut. And you're gonna remove any meat bits, cartilage, skin, because you don't want that part. Leaving skin or bits of meat or cartilage on your pork fat is gonna give your finished product a piggy kind of greasy taste, and we don't want that. So I always remove absolutely everything I can off the fat and only keep the good stuff. Now the last time I rendered pork fat, I cut it up by hand like I am right now. Ideally, I have a grinder to do it. The grinder that I wanted wasn't gonna get here in time before I needed to start rendering this fat. So next time I'm gonna have a grinder, but for now, I have to cut it up by hand, which takes a little bit longer. The reason a grinder would work better, not that this doesn't work, is because it does the work for you. It grinds it up for you. Cutting pork fat can be a little bit difficult. As you can see, it's kind of hard to cut through. Maybe that's just my knife, who knows? But the grinder takes it down into smaller pieces and the smaller the piece, the quicker it's going to render down. So because I'm cutting this by hand, my pieces are a little bit larger, which means it's going to take a little bit longer to render down. As you're handling the pork fat, it's going to start to warm up and become really greasy. So you need to be careful when you're cutting. This is already slippery for me when I'm cutting and the last thing you need is a greasy pan slipping on the knife and cutting yourself. There's a lot of different uses for pork fat, but the main thing that I use it for is cooking, but also making lotion and soap. There's a lot of stuff that we stop buying from the store and every year I add more things to it. Last year, one of the things that was on my list was soap. So I learned how to make soap last year. If you've ever wanted to make soap, but you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed with the process, it's really not as hard as you might think. The first time I tried it, I had no idea what I was doing. But the bar of soap turned out really well. And the first bar of soap I ever made was made with pig fat. On top of soaps and lotions, I also use the fat for baking. Pig fat is actually really good for pie dough, making biscuits, crust, anything like that. And not only do I know how this fat was rendered and what's in it, but it was free. So it cost me nothing, except for my time to render it down, which I don't mind because I enjoy doing this kind of stuff. I'm just gonna finish cubing up all this pork fat and then we're gonna get it on the stove. up all the pork fat now I'm just gonna put it on the stove turn it on low and let it start to render while I was cutting up the pork fat I actually forgot something else that I have to get done today and that is 
boiling down some beef bones that I have. I've got my two bags of beef bones and of course my favorite pot. If you watched my last video, you'll know. We've got these two nice big bags of bones. I'm just gonna add these to the pot. Look at the size of these bones. This is gonna make such good bone broth. We stopped buying meat from the store, I think two or three years ago, and I have not looked back since. We've been buying beef off my aunt for the last few years. We recently started buying pork off of my cousin, and then we do our own chickens and turkeys, and then we also hunt and fish. Beef bone broth is something that takes a really long time to boil down, much longer than chicken or turkey stock. So I'm gonna put this on today, but this won't be finished until tomorrow. I'll let it boil all day, and then I'll turn it off when I go to bed, and I'll let it boil again tomorrow for several hours. And then probably tomorrow evening sometime, that's when I'll end up pressure canning it. I'm just gonna grab some rosemary and thyme, I think and that's probably all I'll put in. Here's all the turkey and chicken broth that I canned up in the last video. I'm ready to fill it up with water, add a splash of apple cider vinegar, and get it on the stove. I'm just gonna add a splash of apple cider vinegar, put the lid on, and then it's ready to go. I'm gonna set this pot to high because I want it to come to a boil quickly. Once it's at a boil, I'm gonna turn it down to low just like I did with the turkey and the chicken stock. And then I'm gonna leave it here for the rest of the day and tomorrow to make sure that we get absolutely everything out of the bones. I'm just gonna check on the pork fat. I need to set the bread maker and then I'm gonna head outside and start doing chores. A lot of people ask why I use my truck when I'm doing chores. Why am I not walking? Why am I not just carrying it? Why am I using my truck? And the simple answer is we have pigs, chickens, ducks, goats, a cow. They all need food. They all need water. A few of them eat hay. So why wouldn't I just put it all in the back of my truck and drive it over? It saves a significant amount of time and I only have to make one trip. Not only are we carrying food, hay, straw, and all that other stuff, we're also carrying water right now. Because it's winter, our garden hose is completely frozen, so we have to fill up buckets in the house and carry them outside. When there's so many things to do at home, it just makes sense to save time where you can. If everyone's doing chores together, then that's one thing because we can each push a wheelbarrow. But when it's just me, there's no sense in making five trips. I'm going to go back inside and I should have enough fat rendered down in the pot to start jarring it up.
As soon as I walked in the house, the beef stock was all I could smell. There's a lot of steam coming out of the pot right now, so it's definitely at a rolling boil. I'm gonna give it a quick stir and turn it down to low and let it simmer for the rest of the day, and then I'll pick it up again tomorrow. The pork fat, I can hear it bubbling a bit, so there's probably some liquid in there that we can scoop out and strain and put in jars. And I just heard the bread maker go off. So I'm gonna give my pot a stir, stir my pig fat, roll out my dough, and when my dough is rising, I'm gonna start ladling out the pig fat into jars. It smells absolutely amazing. I'm just gonna put the lid back on and turn it down to low. Now let's have a quick peek at our pork fat. So you can see the pork fat's definitely rendering down. These pieces are a lot smaller than when I put them in. So I'll just give this a quick stir. I'm gonna let it render a little bit more. I'm gonna roll out my dough. And then once my dough is rising, I'll start scooping this out. Some of the fat has dripped off the spatula and it's a really nice pure white color. So this is gonna be really nice once it gets into the jars. I got this really cool bread pan. It's called a Pullman pan and I use it for making sandwich bread. But I really love this pan because when the dough rises, before it's reached the top, you put the lid on and it keeps it in a square shape, which makes it really nice for making sandwiches and putting in the toaster. So I've got my dough here. It's already done and ready to be rolled out. I like to use the bread maker for making the dough, especially on days when I have a lot going on. It just saves time. I can just turn it on and walk away and come back in an hour and a half. So all I'm gonna do is roll my dough into a bit of a log shape here. I'm gonna put it inside my grease pan and I'm gonna put it in front of the wood stove and let it rise. I've got everything set up to start ladling my fat. This is very hot, so you wanna be really careful while you're straining it. I'm trying not to get any chunks in my ladle because I wanna leave them in the pot so they can continue to render down once I'm done scooping out the fat. If you're wondering why the fat looks yellow when it's going into the jars, when all the photos or videos you've seen on YouTube or Instagram show that the pork fat is white, when it's liquid, it's this golden kind of color. But when it cools off and it hardens, it's going to be that pure white color that you're used to seeing. I've got a lot more fat rendered down than I thought, so I'm going to go ahead and use a one liter jar this time. Because the fat is so hot, these jars are gonna seal on their own. So I'm just gonna put the lids and the rings on, just tighten them hand tight. The bread's done rising, so I'm just gonna throw it in the oven, which I've already preheated and it's already ready to go. I'm just gonna take the plastic off the pan, put the bread pan lid on, and put it in the oven for 30 minutes. Our beef stock is still simmering away, so there's nothing to do with that. I'll just give it a quick stir and I'm gonna leave that alone. I'll finish jarring up this and then that frees up space on the stove to start rendering down our beeswax. We just wrapped up our third season of having bees and we had the best year we've ever had for honey. I usually process the wax as I'm harvesting the honey, but I didn't have time this year to finish the last rendering of beeswax because we were moving. So what I do is I bag up my wax and I put it in the freezer and I do it later on in the winter when I have time. When it comes to rendering beeswax, I am by no means an expert, but what I like to do is I take my wax, I take some cheesecloth, I bundle it up inside the cheesecloth, and then I just put it in a pot of hot water and I let everything melt out of it. You don't have to use cheesecloth. You can put your wax right into hot water and it will separate and the wax will come to the top and the water will stay at the bottom. The cheesecloth just helps to keep out bits of dead bees. So you can see this piece of wax here has a dead bee stuck in it. So all I'm gonna do is just dump the wax into the cheesecloth and put the wax inside a pot of hot water. Before I get going on my beeswax, the timer just went off for my bread. So I'm gonna take that out, put it on a rack to cool, and then I'm gonna get rendering my wax. The sandwich bread turned out absolutely perfect. And if you're wondering how to make bread dough in the bread maker, but not actually cook the bread in the bread maker, you can just add your favorite bread dough recipe to the bread maker and put it on your dough setting. 
So I've got all my wax in this cheesecloth bundle and I'm just gonna put it in the hot water. Now you don't wanna fill your pot too full because you are adding extra volume to the pot by adding this big bag of wax. And I did that the first time I ever rendered wax. I put way too much water in and I dropped the wax in and it overflowed. And you can see that it's already starting to come out of the cheesecloth. Another thing I should note if you are rendering wax is that you want to choose one pot and designate it strictly to rendering wax down. Beeswax is incredibly hard to get off once it's been melted and stuck to the edges of the pot. I took an old camping pot out of the trailer and that's what I used to render my wax. The wax is basically done rendering down so you can see how small the bag is now. So all that dark stuff that's left in the bottom is all stuff that I don't want in my wax. So you can see in the bottom of the bag all this dark stuff and the really dark spots. That's why I use the cheesecloth, just to skim all this stuff out so it's not sitting in my wax once it hardens. So all I have to do now is let the last little bit of wax drip out of the bag and then I'll just toss this away. If you want to store it in a brick shape or in a block, all you have to do after that is melt it in a double boiler and just pour it into a mold. When I do that, I always strain it through cheesecloth one more time and that's just for a final way to get out any leftover little bits of impurities that are in the wax. One of the last things I have to get done today is unmolding my soaps. So this is where I keep all the soaps that I've made that are cured. And actually this soap right here was made with some of the pig fat that I had rendered down previously. So this soap is goat milk and honey. So it's made with milk from our goats, honey from our bees, wax from our bees, and then rendered down lard. But these aren't the soaps I'm talking about. I've got a few fresh batches here that I have to take out of the mold, and I have another batch here that needs to be cut into blocks. This one's still a little bit soft, so I'm gonna leave that and cut it later tonight, but these ones are ready to come out of the mold and go up on the shelf and cure with the rest. Making soap isn't something you should be intimidated by. I know it might seem overwhelming at first because it did seem that way to me too, but it's really not as hard as it seems. So I'll unmold the rest of these and I'll put them on the shelf, and that pretty much wraps up the things I had to do today. Well, that's it for this video. I got everything done that I needed to get done today. Don't think this is what I do every single day because it's not. I'm not making bone broth and rendering fat and making soap, well, making soap, yes, I do make that almost every day. But the other stuff, I don't do that every day. That's just the stuff I had on the list for today. And the reason I got it all done is because I had a plan of what I wanted to get done today. And I started it in the order of what would take me the longest. And that's how I got it all done. I know that pork fat takes a long time to render, so I started that. I know that beef broth takes a long time to simmer down, so I started that first too. In the meantime, while that stuff's cooking down and there's not much maintenance that it needs, I put the bread maker on. The bread maker doesn't need my attention for an hour and a half, so while that's on, I feed the animals. Once I've made my way back inside from doing the animals, the bread machine's gone off, so now it's time to roll my dough. While I roll my dough and have it rise, that's when I'm starting to scoop the already rendered pork fat and put it into jars. It's really about being systematic and planning your time accordingly. Now, I'm not saying that homesteading is all about doing 100 things a day because it isn't, because that's how you burn yourself out. But I know that I needed to make room in the freezer to get rid of my bones. I know I needed to render my beeswax. I know I needed to render my pork fat. So if I'm gonna spend a whole day in the kitchen doing one of those things, I might as well do them all at the same time. Everything that needed to get done is done. I'll turn the beef broth off tonight when I go to bed. Tomorrow morning, I'll turn it back on and tomorrow afternoon I'll can it up. The wax is done. It just needs to separate and come to the top, which it's doing already. Once it's solidified, I'll just take it out and I'll put it away. The pork fat is already starting to solidify. And you can see when you look at the jars, the different colors of the pork fat. And the reason it's a different, and the reason it's a different color is because it's starting to cool down I got my bread done, my soaps are out of the molds, and really that's all I had planned for today. Like I said, this is not what I do every single day. They're usually all saved up for days that I'm at home. So that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed the video and make sure to join us on Instagram because that's where you can see what we're up to every day, all the time, in real time. So check in on Instagram tomorrow and you'll be able to see what our beef broth looked like when it was finished. So that's it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Mmm. -hmm.